Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be just doing a quick video of my vintage Parker 51. Here it is in all of its glory. I've been wanting to add a vintage pen to my collection since probably last summer. I feel like last summer a lot of the fountain pen people that I watch got into vintage pens and so I was like Mm, those look pretty interesting, but for the most part vintage pens are not at all my aesthetic, so I took my time trying to figure out which one I really wanted, and then the new Parker 51s started to, um, they didn't come out until this year, but talk about them started to come out like in the fall of last year, and so that kind of got me thinking about a new one versus an old one, and ultimately, because of all of the negative reviews on the new one, I decided to go for a vintage one. Also, Cass from Inkfade did a video on her vintage Parker 51, and that was kind of like the icing on the cake for me, because the joy that radiated from her video was just like what I needed to hear, I guess. I had researched this pen for a while, weeks and weeks, and then she posted her video out of nowhere, and I was like, okay, if she feels that way about this pen, then I think I need to get it. So I went on eBay, and I found someone selling a bunch of refurbished ones. I was not interested in fixing my own, redoing my own. It, that's just... I have no desire to do that. I am a person that will buy just about anything. I will, I will be willing to spend the extra money to have it exactly the way I want. Um, I buy my cars like that. I buy my motorcycles like that. I want it done before I take it home because I just have no desire to do that on my own, even if it will save me money. Um, you can always make more money, but you can never make more time. I got a, a Dove Gray with a medium 14 karat gold nib. It is obviously, as you can see, it's a hooded nib, which was never something that I was into until I got this pen. And now I have like three hooded nibs in my collection, I think. It is a vacuumatic. They do come in aerometric, I think is what it's called, where you like squeeze the little converter. Um, I wanted the vacuumatic because I didn't know what I didn't know, I guess. Um, I thought the vacuumatic was like a vacuum filler pen where you pull the rod, stick it in the ink, and push the rod, and it goes whoosh, up into the pen. Um, and then I got it, and I was like, what the heck is this thing? I thought it would be easier to clean. Um, this is not easier to clean at all. This is a pain in my butt to clean it out, but that's okay. Um, I, I, I don't know. So I don't know which one is actually the better choice, but <laughs> I got what I got, I guess. So, um, I don't know. I guess I'll do like the pen reviewers these days. They all do some, um, what's it called? size comparisons. So there's a Lamy 2000 and a Twisby Diamond 580. So it's a little shorter and it is a little skinnier, but it is extremely comfortable to hold, even though it's one of my thinner pens. So I have, I have it inked with the Jacques Urban Eclat Eclat de Saphir. I bought two of these little 10 mil bottles from my local stationery shop just because this is such a pain in the butt to clean and after you're pumping it like 27 times the ink is still in it and so I didn't want to be sticking this in my giant bottles of ink that I use for my other pens because I just didn't want them to get contaminated so I bought those little ones and those are the ones that I'll be using for this pen. So this is my in frame. 
biasa ini And I wrote maybe from 1945 because it has a stamp code here. I don't know if that's going to be easy to see, but it says Parker 51 made in USA. And then there's a teeny tiny little five right there. And from my research, my quick research, I think when there's only one number like that, it means that it was made in the 40s. So that would be 45. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure. It was advertised as being made in the 40s, so not sure, but I don't really care. Um, I just wanted a vintage pen and I got a vintage pen, so how vintage it is really does not matter to me very much. But here is the, this is on a Rhodia dot pad. It's a nice juicy medium nib. Do I have any, um... This is an extra fine, Lamy 2000. Um, I don't know if it's a 14 or an 18K. I have no idea, but I know it is a gold nib. Um, but that is a comparison with a Lamy extra fine nib which kind of writes a little bit like a fine. But this is very smooth. It's a very, it's not glassy smooth necessarily, but I don't know if you can hear that. You can definitely tell that you're on the paper, but it is, it's extremely smooth. It is so comfortable to hold. Um, I would say that they're not really a sweet spot. Um, I don't necessarily hold my pens like straight on like this. I tend to kind of hook it around and I kind of write with my nib sideways and it still writes perfectly no matter how I hold it. Um, it's just such a nice pen. It really surprised me, honestly because it's a vintage pen and I really wasn't um, expecting much from this pen, but when I received it, if you remember, if you watched my Pelican M600 unboxing, when I wrote with this pen, it was like the stars aligned and I was like, I'm done buying pens. Like this is, this is the it, this, this is the it. <laughs> what does that mean? This is the end for me. I'm like, this is it, this is, what I've been looking for in a pen. It's the most comfortable pen I've ever held. It is the smoothest, I, I, I guess I wouldn't say it's the smoothest nib, but it is the, the best nib for me, I guess. Like I love glassy smooth nibs and this is with just like the smallest hint of feedback so that I know that I'm on the paper, but at the same time, it just is like butter the whole time. So I was pleasantly surprised. Um, obviously I did not stop buying fountain pens. I actually have three of them on the way today to me. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, Amanda B bought more pens. So I think my, what was it? My exclamation or my, my saying that I was done buying pens, I don't think counts anymore because Amanda B bought another pen and just did a video on it. So I think I'm safe in that I bought more pens, but this has definitely made its way up to my top three, probably even my favorite pen. This is a pen that I will have for the rest of my life. Hopefully Scarlet 
is into pens and she takes good care of it too. But that's all I have to say. I just wanted to kind of gush about my first vintage pen. I know it's a rabbit hole in and of itself and that, you know, they're like Lay's chips. You can't just have one, but I really did just want one pen. So one vintage pen. So I'm glad that it was this one. It was perfect. All right. Well, I hope that this video was helpful. Maybe you also want to get a vintage Parker 51 and this was like the icing on the cake for you as Cass's video was for me. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.